There he is, Monster Man, Cleve Hall, at Cleve Hall's house. He spares no expense. Real quick, uh, <laughs> real quick, our sponsors, go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS for uh, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. I'm talking too fast again. Oh, yeah, you don't remember that. He's yeah. trying to squeeze it all in. <laughs> trying to squeeze it all in. Yeah. Uh, you get a free book, f- two free Audible originals, including the Alien 3 written by William Gibson and uh, a 30 day trial to Audible. Go to Doomy's Home Cooking if you're in LA. Doomy! Culver City or Toronto, the best vegan yeah. food you've ever had. You know Phil, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, this is, I, I, you have been called the Goth Mr. Rogers. Yeah, that, well, that's because um, I have my TV show, Monster Man on Sci Fi Channel. One of the weird things about it was that. All these kids started watching it, and they're really into it. And I go to a lot of conventions, not so many now, but like for a couple of years, it was every weekend. Right. All over the country. And I would meet these wonderful kids who come up, and they're so smart and so talented. They, a little seven-year-old girl in Pittsburgh brings this evil clown puppet. She was she had sculpted and cast herself seven years old. And it was crude, but I got this, you know, seven years old with her hands. Well, that's and great. me, inspiring a new generation of children to create art with their hands and to love monsters is the best legacy you could leave. But um, I've now got all these kid fans and stuff, so it's kind of like I'm the goth Mr. Rogers. Right. And every kid should have a role model who drives, who wears eyeliner and drives a hearse, in my opinion. I've seen the hearse. Oh, you've seen the new I'll buy one. into that. I saw oh, the new one. You, 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 yeah, you were working out. on it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, I'm just about to paint it. It's running out. It's getting it to stop. That's the issue. <laughs> you know? So I'm doing the rear brakes now. But, yeah, it's almost there. It's right. Nine, it's in 1961, SNS Victoria. Her name Ooh. is Hersula. Hersula. I'm ask you what's oh, her she's name. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Do, do hearses have to have a name? Yeah. Yes. No, they don't have to, but they just... They I don't know. I'm kidding. Yeah, I don't know one that doesn't have a name. Like Lydia, you know, she has Dusty and all the yeah, yeah, right. Now, uh, I, uh, and you also won uh, uh, Emmy awards, I think, for Yo Gabba Gabba. So yeah, I know you have a following for that. I got nominated for it, but the uh, Summer Games, Pan Am Summer Games, or something won. People jumping around in unitards, uh, excuse me, yeah, won over Yo Gabba Gabba. But that's okay. It was nice. You just wanted nominated. an excuse to say the word tard in any form that you could. Yeah. That's yeah. not okay. But just go half tard. Yeah. yeah, you can go yes. full tard, half tard. You just can't say. Depends on the time of day. You can't for me. say yeah. tard again. I know. I'm, I'm not being politically correct. Now, how, now, when you showed up at the Emmys, how, uh, how did what was oh, the I reaction? Didn't show up. I, uh, I didn't go. I, I was that was in New York. I think it's just, it cost a ton of money to go to that. Right. Yeah. No. It's like I would have had to know I was winning. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Nobody wants a camera to flick over to my disappointed look. <laughs> I know that that'd be that'd be yeah. that'd be that'd be quite a meme though. Oh yeah. I know it would have been cool stuff, but yeah, it was it was extremely expensive to go to the Emmys. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was reading now, uh, you're from Florida, which I didn't know. Yes, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Now is yeah. is this lore or is this real? On Wikipedia it says you live right next to a graveyard. Not only do we live next to the graveyard, we owned it. Uh, the oh, oh, you, Memorial Park. Yeah, it's a huge cemetery. Very pretty. You're, very fr- nice you're from a family of morticians. No, we just owned the cemetery. We weren't really morticians. <laughs> um, uh, my great grandfather had built it and uh, drained the whole area because if you know anything about Florida, you go down one deep, you're in the water. Oh, sure. Uh, so they drained the whole area. Everything. It's a beautiful cemetery, beautiful statues from Italy, and I have a family crypt there, which you know my, everybody's in. And there, my plan there is whenever I kick it. Is I'm going to knock out the wall, and there's a little wall between, partition between two of them. I'm going to have a double wide coffin. You know, I'm going to have <laughs> nice. passion of lovers playing on nonstop loop. Mm-hmm. You know, from about, and then um, the epitaph, fuck them if they can't take a joke. You know, that's, that's my plan. Yeah, well, that, that's a good plan. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's nice to have, uh, it's nice to have connections. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it helps to be a member of the. Yeah, yeah I don't think For, Forest Lawn will let you do that or wherever mm-hmm. else. No, but uh, and uh, I also because I was not uh, I was not aware of a lot of stuff, and I've uh, I've been researching. I just I just knew he's the creepy guy at the goth clubs for first of all, yeah, and then it's like no, that's it. Monster Man, and then I, I I found out about the series and found out what you did. I don't and, make a big deal out of things because I kind of like don't like to toot my own horn. Can, can I funny. can I toot your horn? I I was excited because I saw in association with your name this afternoon. Kiwi's Big Adventure. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, getting to that. What's the story? Yeah, well, I beat you to it. Hi, yeah, yeah. Wall. <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, Kiwi's Big Adventure, it was like, um, that was Tim Burton's first film. And yeah. uh, that was like 1985, I believe. And they were looking for the scene at the end with the chase through this, uh, Warner Brothers looking for a Godzilla-like suit. And uh, I think Steve Johnson told them, uh, well, I know somebody's got one, you know, me. And he referred to him as me. And then they said, well, we need another one, a flying creature. And I said, well, I've got a King Ghidorah suit also. Because these were back in Florida. I had made these when I was younger. Right. So I had them shipped out, and I played Godzilla. 
that had died that day, and I was not scared because I've been <laughs> stomping on tanks, fighting King Ghidra, and running in the Twisted Sisters car. Right. And it's one of being a Godzilla on screen. You know, that's huge. I love Godzilla, in case you have not noticed. Oh, no, that's fine with me. Love him. <laughs> like, well, let, let me ask you a question because I've, I've asked this uh, of a couple other guests that are big Godzilla fans. Why can't America make a decent Godzilla movie? I like the new one. I, I haven't the seen one. the new one. I haven't seen the new the one. The new one's good. I mean, the story-wise, it's like, then that's what the critics are painting it for, is like this human story is just kind of lame, and it's not the greatest. It could have been better, but who cares? You want to see monsters open a can of whoop ass on each other. Right. And that's what this film has. And it has Godzilla, it has Mothra, right. Rodan, and King Ghidorah in it. You know, the big four big favorites. Okay. Just to see them done, and see Godzilla get that respect, it's important. So they, Plus, fi they finally did it right. Well, the big thing about this one is that the um, Brad McCreary did score to it. But he used the original themes from Akira Ifuku Bay, which is part of the thing of Godzilla. It's like no other character in popular characters probably is recognized by his theme song as maybe James Bond would be the only other one. <laughs> or a Batman. Yeah. You hear that music. Yeah. You know, you know it's a Godzilla. You know, mm -hmm. to hear that music again, okay, I cried. <laughs> I lost yeah. it. I'm all teared up in there when he showed up and they start playing that music because it's beautiful. Ifuku Bay was a genius and stuff. Right. And he created Godzilla's roar also by just rubbing a, like a resin coated glove across the contrabass strings you got that oh sound. is that what it was yep okay you got the weird noise wow but, you know, there's just there's magic in those films it's like whenever the egyptian showed the old films or the old hammer movies yeah. or the old Edgar Allan Poe's of vincent price there's magic in those movies that will never be repeated right you see them again on a big screen and hear the pops and stuff with the soundtrack and that just takes me back to my youth growing up in jacksonville at the murray hill theater every weekend watching these movies and, right you know they're wonderful and you had built the Godzilla suit for what? Well, the first Godzilla, well, that Godzilla suit was actually the third one I'd done. The first one I did in 76 was as an amateur. I had gotten, in, I was doing stop motion animation first, doing little models and stuff, and I was really into that and the whole okay. Ray Harryhausen thing. Yeah. And I was in high school, and I went, uh, my best friend, the late Steve Sleep, he and I used to every day go home from um, school and build stuff and animate them in the garage. And then one day we decided to build, using those techniques, build a big suit. So we did a Godzilla won a costume contest at a convention in Houston, then took like over Texas one and one and I've been that was like I think I was still a junior in high school and I was already doing this stuff. Right. And the oh, one yeah. that said Pee Wee is the third one I had made because that one we did a sculpted head and everything and got it right and then uh then the King Gator we used those actually we did like a show with a symphony orchestra in Jacksonville. They did a Star Wars concert and we right. had the monsters show up and they did music to that, I think Holes of the Planets and we did our on stage monster fight with explosions and well, stuff. Those were the days. It was fun stuff. Uh, like, well, so you just said Hulk the Planets. I, always I know, I know. Look, yeah. look, look at that smile. Look at that. I, I do love classical. Me you too. should know yeah. this about me. Hulk the Planets, and then Adams is a, a U.S. composer, and he actually had written Pluto after the planet. Anyway, you, yeah. it, you don't need to know this. You can look but it up. No, we like all need to know I like to use Prokofiev's uh, Enemy Gods, yeah. which is a great one for a monster role. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, we did that, and then... Uh, I had them stored, actually, after I left L.A., I had them stored at the museum, the planetarium that we used to perform at, because we used to do cosmic concerts, mm -hmm. you know, every three shows every weekend, or every Friday night and Saturday night, and those were great, because we'd do live uh, black light puppetry, all kinds of stuff in a planetarium right. with the stuff projected, spin the stars real fast so you get people to throw up, and play That's rock music and stuff. Yeah. It was great, yeah. yeah, and it was fun and stuff, and I created those shows. I loved doing those. It was very, it was, each one was like 40 minutes long, and had like four sections in it we'd end off with a giant puppet at the end like five operators like Chernobog from Night on Ball Mountain and end with that that was our little fright music uh, show and we did those before you know I got out to LA and I'm thinking oh I'm going to become get in, learn all these professional things and what they're doing out here well because everything I made back in Jacksonville was made out of mattress foam well, I got found out when I got here. Yeah. My book the first day was, "Oh, you do foam fabrication." Bam! I was hired. I did not know it was considered a specialty out here, and that's what I've been doing now for forty years: is fabricating things out of foam. Yeah. You know, and it's which which is which, same thing, right? Yeah, it is. It's like two of us. It used to be the foam gods with the back in the eighties <laughs> when every there was so much work. Right. Now there's about two of us left. Bill Bryan and I still doing it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll talk about the CGI and all that. Yeah, but. the CGI thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be happy to be honest, and I, I know I've said this before, but uh, I'm I'm not a huge fan of CGI. I no. think there's there's a, a romance in puppeteering and puppet strings. There's something about having it there live for one thing, but yeah. here's yeah. my take on if it. If you're stuck in the, a good storyline, CGI it doesn't matter. to me is a good enhancement for a practical effect, but you never replace it. And because what that does is it takes out the how do they do that aspect and that takes out the magic. 
Right. That's yeah. it. Because like, I think of Valley of Guanji when the giant cowboys are roping the Tyrannosaurus, the old Harryhausen film. Sure. The yeah. That's beautiful. You just don't even know where the real rope ended and the fake animated one lit, ended up. It was just amazing how he did that and stuff. He's so right. and, and, and he just, yeah. yeah. I love that. Cool. Well, it hasn't to mention that uh, CJ doesn't quite have yet. Yeah. Although, I mean, you know, it's... They're getting close. They're getting close, but... he's done some good stuff. I mean, it depends. Like, the, the uh, Spider-Man 2, the Doc Ock Spider-Man fight is amazing. Yeah. Because it has impact and it has weight. So many things that are CGI, like that 2005 King Kong, he's flying all over the place. Right. Like he's weightless, yeah. you know, and sliding around on the ice on his butt. Oh, cutesy. That's not Kong. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, just uh, the Clash of the Titans remake was really good. Like, those crap... Those, Big crabs or whatever, they you know, they smashed up. You almost felt the shaking. You know? no, I don't know. I, I, I got to disagree with that. The original is so much better. The original fun. I didn't see the new one, so I have yeah. to be fair. I did not you see the it. new it's one. Good. It's got some really good stuff. Well, you, you know, but you're the expert. You know better than I do. But well, when that one wasn't one, one of Harryhausen's best. I mean, that was his last film. Yeah. I'm a big Harryhausen. I, I love how you said it. You're like, it wasn't a Harryhausen boss. Well, well, it wasn't because he did it from um, MGM and all the other ones that had been for Columbia and then all the Sinbad, Seven Forges Sinbad and all the really classic ones. Yeah. That and um, Jason and the Argonauts, the ones yeah. he had done then, Valley of Guanji and First Men in the Moon. And so sure. he did Clash of the Titans. It's kind of a mess because it kind of mixes so many different mythos together. Because yeah. uh, first of all, Pegasus did not fight uh, with, um, what's his name? Um, Peg uh, right, right, right. Uh, the guy. Yeah. Was it Perseus? Perseus, yeah. No, it actually was. Um, Keep thinking Harry Pegasus, Hamlin. Uh, when, yeah, uh, Harry Hamlin was a term. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he fought the Chimera with Bellerophon. Right. And um, Perseus had little wing shoes, but I guess that wouldn't have been as interesting. See, but they have they Archimedes. And I don't even know how they did Archimedes, and that was like the cutest you little... You mean Bubo? Was it Bubo? Yeah. Yeah, Bubo, yeah. I'm but, mixing uh, up my owls. Well, yeah. That was like, that was thrown in to be like an R2-D2 thing back in the 70s. when right. They make a joke about it in the new one. Oh, do they? Oh, they pick him up and said, don't bring that's worthless. <laughs> Well, I, I have a I, I have a soft spot for Clash of the Titans because for some reason when I was like I think sixth grade because we were studying mythology, like we, they they show yeah. Clash of the Titans in class, yeah, and there's like you know boobs and stuff, and everybody was just you know just about ready to uh, you know just prepubescent and really like uh, <laughs> when the boobs came on screen, everybody started. Well, oh right, that's the only boobs. person that showed weird. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, not, I think there's a little well, we had an edit little, little hiney too. I we think had, yeah. like overprotective parrots, so <laughs> they all like pre-edited the. Uh, well, they snuck the it in there very subtly. They had them getting out of the bath and Judy Bowker from the back. Yeah, in the original, yeah. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't uh, censor this, so it was really weird. Yeah. So when I when you always sh agree that crack kills, it depends what kind. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. That's what did it. I mean, look at their hammering their cleavage. You know? like, I saw I saw, I saw some crack coming down here. Somebody no. has like their sweatpants are real, real, real. Uh, Sorry, well. I'll, I'll I'll pull them. I'll no, pull not them. you. Sorry. No, no. Was, this is on. This is on. Uh, on uh, yeah, just driving here. Uh, when you show up in the Godzilla outfit, what does uh, Tim Burton think? Oh, um, he loved it absolutely. Uh, in fact, well, he liked the way I looked because I had my goth hawk up and all that stuff when I got there. Oh, the goth hawk. Yeah, and. Um, but actually, in the film, if you, right before the Godzilla scene, the first shot of his foot hitting the tank, there's two cuts of the of the sleigh, or no, it's not the sleigh yet. It's the uh, yeah, I think it's the sleigh. Yeah, the sleigh and the boat going by, and you see me on the right hand side as myself. Right. And he just stuck me in the scene. Oh, that's right. You were one, like one of the bikers or something. Or, or... Yeah, no, I was just one of the. I was a guy standing there talking right. to somebody in the, right. in the background. Well, okay. Extra, you know, just because he like. Would that would that be like considered? Look, you know. Would that be considered an Easter egg? I guess I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 it's, 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 it's on it's on your IMDb uh, as uncredited. Oh uh, yeah, it says uh, the biker thing. I'm not one of the bikers. No, no. Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, I, I am not one. one thing, so. Yeah. Now that was fun because we shot the scene over it, and I ran into a wall at the end of it, and then yeah. I guess D. Snyder found out that Godzilla was going to be in it, wanted to be in it, so they redid it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And. Uh, he that was good. He was very, very cool. Yeah, at, at that at that point, whatever D. Snyder says, D. Snyder. D. Snyder's yeah. cool. He's very underrated. No, no, he, no, he, he is. Pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like him a lot. That's his, his thing at the P when the PRMC thing. Sure. Uh, testified is amazing. No, no, he's great. He's yeah, great. No, he, he's an under he's an underrated singer. But at that point, he was like that's when he was at his peak. Yeah, he was. He was I think polite, that was pre very polite, very hilarious. Pre pre leader of the pack. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's when that. that. I, I, Polite is definitely underrated. Well, that's something like uh, you know, like Marilyn Manson, somebody who's like whenever yeah. he's insulted, yeah. it's got somebody. I've seen him on Bill Maher's or whatever. Some Christian person would not let him get a word in, and he would just very politely finally say, you know, like I've read the Bible, I've also read the Cat in the Hat. I thought both were good books. <laughs> and that was just a very polite response, you know, nothing insulting. And actually, uh, speaking of Dee Snyder uh, and being uh, the horror movie from the 
now though. He's big with Strange that. Strange Land. That's a great movie. Is is underrated and very yeah, influential. Very cool. There's yeah. no saw without Strange Land. Right. That, yeah, I was very squeamish because it's very much a modern primitive thing, you know. But that's that was the it's torture porn and saw were basically born yeah. from that movie. I do like saw. They, they had some fun stuff. So yeah, I, I like the two of them actually because the second one kind of answers a lot of questions from the first one and it right. has an ending to it. Right. Or there was a third one. Really got no, no. There's that. like ten of them. Oh, really? I yeah, you, you, yeah. Uh, uh, Saw 3D, Carrie always comes back. But no, I, I'm not I, the biggest thing. I will say, I'm not the biggest thing on Blood and Glory. It doesn't I mean, pay the rent. And by the way, they're going to reboot Saw, um, and Chris Rock is writing and directing it. Okay, I love Chris Rock, but yeah. when they say reboot Saw, didn't Saw just What's start? What's the difference between a reboot and a remake? I know, so did Cabin Fever, and they've already rebooted No, they just it. did They did Jigsaw, and okay, that yeah. failed. So now they're going to do a, no, a reboot of the reboots. So I think, is, is a reboot just... Basically taking what exists and then just and building on it, and a remake yeah, is like, like no, we really think a lot of ourselves. A remake, a remake, yeah. a remake is like we're doing the same plot. We're one remake. A, re- yeah. a reboot is Amps we're kind of doing the same plot, but it's a little different. Well, they did that with Friday the Thirteenth, and it was really bad. Is, isn't there? It, can't we just yes, decide we that we should be original? Like, like we're going back I to. I think that's a good idea. I, I like, like, like reboot is like we're going back to one. Like Batman Begins is a reboot. Uh, like Casino Royale is a reboot. Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah. This is like somebody who has a serious ego problem that's like, no, no, I think my vision should hold the day. I yeah. think right. the world needs to see Well, that's my what Chris vision. Rock, Chris Rock's like, I, everybody needs I'll to see my song. I'll do whatever he wants well, to I'll do. Well, one that, yeah. like, um, I guess Dawn of the Dead was a remake in a way, but that was amazing. I that was great. The remake of Dawn of the Dead. But that was a remake. That wasn't like, original. yeah. Yeah. I uh, love it, that song. It, I think uh, I would say probably... I like it just as much as the original. At least yeah. As much as yeah. It, yeah, that was, was one the, one of few. That was a rare occasion when yeah. that was very good. Was it Dawn of the Dead? It was either the the remake one Dawn of the, the Dead mall. or Dawn of the Dead Two. And I remember they were supposed to have some big outdoor scene, and I was working at Playmates of Hollywood at the time. And the oh, did, really? Agent, yeah. yeah. The casting yeah. agent came in and offered us, "Hey, would you basically would you like to be extras in Dawn of the Dead?" Right. Well, at the time. I knew very little about horror or anything like that, and all I kept thinking, I looked at the address on the sheet, and it was like way out in in mm-hmm. further than I had ever driven before. And mm-hmm. I just I looked at my gal pal at the time. I was like, "Well, do you want to come with me?" And the guy looked at me, and goes, "No, no, just you." Uh-huh. Ah. And I thought, "Ah, uh, I just I freaked out, and I was like, I can't do that drive by myself." And then my friend got pissed because she didn't she wanted mm-hmm. to do it. She knew they wanted right. she wanted to be in Bruce Campbell movie, and I just I just didn't. I was too scared. It was just too Bruce too Campbell. So you're talking about. Evil Dead. Was it Evil Dead? Yeah. Yeah. Probably Evil Dead. Yeah, because that, well, yeah, the third one was shot here. Uh, that was Army of Darkness. I did Army the of Forces armor on that. You want to know something? I do that all the time, especially with Seven and, and Twelve Monkeys, and I'll say Seven Monkeys. Well, that's and, fine. No, I it's yeah. just like, yeah, the Return of the so, Living Dead. So you, you, could yeah. have been, you could have been one of the, uh, in Army of Darkness. I, well, it, it may have been Evil Dead. Or whatever. Well, that's the third Evil Dead movie. This Universal released it, and they didn't want to use that name, so they used Army of Darkness. Was that instead. what it was? Yeah. Well, all I knew was that it was it was Evil some. But you, but you must get you, you must get this all the time, guys. Well, yeah. Like we want you, we want you for this movie. Um, it's not always a movie. Or I'm sure, I'm have. sure it's not. Uh, but you've done some acting. I've done some. Uh, yeah, a long. Well, it was like I started as a, a child actor. I had like a Super Bowl commercial. And, well, I didn't know this. Yeah, I, I peaked it at two. Really? Yeah. What was the Super Bowl it's commercial? All downhill. Mm-hmm. I think it was for Alcoa Tinfoil. So that's, uh, wow, yeah. that really dates you. No, you're over my thoughts. I know. How cold. I was a baby. I was a baby. <laughs> baby. Oh, it's a commercials, they spent so much money on us. They right. did. And it's funny because, yeah. like, when you get your, your, your yearly statement every year, your, like, social security yeah. statement, it shows these, like, two years where I made bank. Yeah. And then just years and years and years of just, I guess I must have been in public school. Do, you, do, do you still get residuals? Uh, I No, I don't think so. Okay. And I don't think they're airing that commercial. I mean, really, yeah. is there anything other than Reynolds? Those commercials with the, like, the one where the guy's sitting in front of the mouse hole yeah. and then the rat, guy in a rat, bad rat costume yeah. bounces through the wall and starts beating the crap out of him. I right. That was, that was great. Simply genius. We, we'd we submitted it. So you were a child actor. Yeah. That might explain the damage. But that that explains a, a lot. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, there's nothing to apologize about. <laughs> yeah. No. That explains why... That explains why I I, I uh, texted you yesterday like you want to come on the show. You're like, 
Yeah, why not? So because I was a child actor. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, fabulous. The ascension. You love well, the ascension. You know, it, it, I think I think it's because you're you're excited at the fact that I'm sometimes available at the drop of a hat, so I can. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it's so because I'm so in demand. Oh well, you are. You you are. You are. Mm. Yeah. Well, I should say spontaneous. Well, you you're doing. I'm so not spontaneous. I'm spontaneous. No, I have like I think that my uh, somebody had bought me a, a, a refrigerator magnet said plan to be spontaneous oh, tomorrow. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. My thing. Just, uh, just I say yes before I talk myself out of things. Right. Yeah. So you're a yes person, and, and that's why that's why I'm glad you're here. Yes. <laughs> Trust me, I know, I know, I know my guests. People are like, "How do you get these great guests?" I'm like, I, I, I just it's timing. I know when to, I know when to get them. But uh, was Reanimator one of the first movies you've worked on? Oh no, no, no. Um, the first movie I ever did was um, Nightmare, which was very well became 